Greetings sailors and welcome to a view replay featuring everybody's favourite ship, the Krasny Krim. Now I say that with some small amount of sarcasm, but it does of course, as I have pointed out numerous times in the past, have some fairly good points going for it. Although points is the word there because to get the best out of this ship you really do need at least a 14 point captain if not a full 19 point captain which is what Chubby here has got. I don't know the exact skills, but AFT for sure, probably BFT, um, maybe IFHE, maybe Demo Expert. It's hard to know. They didn't give me a rundown, so uh, it's just guesswork. But AFT we can definitely say, looking at the range that he's got. And that's one of the, the big pluses of this ship, because it's got 130mm guns, if you put AFT on it, it has an exceptionally good range for a tier 5 cruiser. But that exceptionally good range doesn't come with especially fantastic firepower. It does feel a bit anemic in that regard. You have to hit a lot of shots before you can actually do anything. I should point out, by the way, you're not going to see it till the very end, but Chubby's full username is Chubby CVE Gambia Bay, and I'm not just being weird there, that's actually how they've spelt it. Now, Gambia Bay, of course, and I knew this was familiar, I had to go and look it up, but it was the escort carrier that was lost at the Battle of the Leyte Gulf. I can't remember the exact, was it Casablanca class? I know it wasn't a Bogue class. There was about three or four classes of escort carrier that the US Navy used and some of which even went to the uh, the Royal Navy, and they were quite numerous. But uh, it was, I think, the only US carrier that was lost to surface fire, which was a comparatively unusual thing. Uh, obviously, the Royal Navy lost HMS Glorious in the same way, but I'm struggling to... Like, I don't offhand know if there were any Japanese aircraft carriers that were lost to, to surface fire. I don't know. Anyway, but it's not about carriers. This is all about this ship, although there is a tier four carrier in play. The enemy team has a ho show, which is, um, well, it's a ho show. Uh, I, I think, did they do that nerf already? I can't remember. This was this was pre ho show nerf where it could drop two torp bombers, I think. This team's got a Hermes, so yeah, not quite as good. So the first, Half, two thirds of this replay isn't actually going to be especially amazing. This is one of those games where it takes a while to get going. And partly that's because this ship isn't a big hitter. It needs rather a long time to put out shot after shot after shot after shot. And the damage output is helped if you have IFHE. But to a large extent, you're also relying on getting fires and these 130 mil shells especially if you have IFHE as well they, they don't have a huge fire chance so it does take a while to get there now I'm not sure why Chubby switched to AP for some shots on that uh, Julio Cesare there that was uh, a, a bit long ranged to be honest I mean if you're going for closer range superstructure shots then sure but I'm not entirely sure what the rationale was there Against this Kuma, however, well, it might be a bit more successful, but he's going to need a fairly flat broadside, which the Kuma is going to be quite obliging <laughs> in giving them. But against even an angled Kuma, which is not known for its armor, uh, yeah, you really do need uh, still the HE shells. You might have noticed a bit of weirdness with the replay there. I think... Chubby might have been having some uh, packet loss or some lag issues with this. They took about 30 or 40 seconds to actually load into the game as well. So if you see any little weirdnesses like that in the replay, it will be because of packet loss. So continuing to hammer away with the AP and there we go, gets the kill. And unsurprisingly, yes, the Kuma had fired their torps as the Hydro confirms. Luckily for Chubby, although he's taken a bit of damage, that Kaiser that also pops through the middle has completely ignored him. They seem to be firing uh, at that uh, friendly battleship to the south. So this could have been a bit nastier. And honestly, although the matchmaking is good here for really any tier 5 cruiser, this map in particular 
almost negates one of the biggest advantages of this ship in that it has a really good range. Having said it, possibly... No, I think he must have AFT, because he's got that Cesare in range. I don't know. I can't remember offhand what the range is without AFT. I've just... It, it's been so long since I've played it without AFT. I would have to go and look it up. I'm just looking at the... I, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused now. It might not be AFT. I don't know. I think it is, but I don't know. I'd have to go and check in the replay specifically. Anyway, so, the Kaiser's backed off, I've confused myself about AFT, and now Chubby has turned their attention back to these battleships in the north. And there's an Iron Duke up there as well, who's basically taking all the attention, but they're not going to last too much longer. And this is where you have to really learn how to be twisty-turny in a, well, most Tier 5 cruisers, but this cruiser particularly. Whilst, as I've pointed out in the past, it's actually got some good armour going on in places. The belt's not bad, and there's um, a, a plate around the lower bow that actually makes it resistant against some calibers of battleship shell. In fact, there was a... I think the last time I featured a replay of mine, certainly, uh, that was kind of a, a major point of it because uh, I managed to bounce the battleship shell at the end on the nose. But that's not really going to come into play on this particular game. So, yeah, you really do have to keep your eyes on the swivel as to what might be actually focusing you. And I have to say, Chubby could maybe have done a better job. There are certainly points where they get lucky. I mean, they're playing with their speed a bit at various points as well. And they are certainly... Like, they're not travelling in straight lines for great lengths of time. But there are certainly a lot of times when I feel like they were showing far too much broadside against battleships especially that were trying to shoot at them. And it really does come down to if you're going to get lucky with their RNG or not in that case. Because anybody seeing a broadside cruiser at any tier is going to be very tempted to shoot at it. And for the most part, if you're in said cruiser, that's going to be quite bad for you. So back to the Cesare who is... Uh, sometimes putting their focus on him and sometimes, I guess, looking towards that Nishaislav smoke. The smoke's just about gone. And it's just one of those times when he really got lucky with that dispersion. It absolutely uh, could have been a lot nastier than that, given his angling. And I can understand the desire to try and keep as many guns of that broadside on target as possible, but, but you've got so many guns, you can afford to do a bit of twisty-turny to bring your other guns around from the other side. In fact, the biggest factor that prevents you from uh, doing that more effectively is that the, the turret traverse isn't particularly brilliant considering the calibre. So there goes the Ajaya Slav, again showing a lot of broadside here, and I'm not entirely sure he wants to be... I mean, he knows in, he can bounce a bit, but trying to close the distance on the Cesar is... is, is a, a bit risky personally. I'd be using the range to my advantage because one of the reasons why the range is so useful on this ship is range equals reaction time to incoming shots. And that's true for any class of ship, but if you're in a fragile ship, that's especially useful. And it's why when you have those shorter range cruisers at higher tiers, um, if you can't get the extra range, then there are some cruisers certainly where, from tier 8 and above, uh, going for the, the, the double rudder shift modules becomes an increasingly attractive prospect because, well, you don't have the reaction time from um, the extra range, so you might as well try and get a bit of reaction time shaved off your rudder response. But you can't do that at tier 5. You can, In fact, can you even put one rudder module on at tier 5? I can't remember. I think that might be from tier 6 and above that you get access to that particular module. Anyway, so that Cesare is dealt with in the north. We're up to 60,000 damage, and this is already a very respectable tier 5 cruiser game. The Kaisers died to that Hermes. We've got two battleships and that Hermes left alive. And overall, this doesn't look too bad. Four ships versus three. That Wyoming certainly has a decent amount of health left. 
The Clemson, we don't know, but it's a Clemson. It's got a destroyer health pool, so it's not going to be that brilliant. It's going to be not that easy to hit a Clemson with these guns, uh, anything other than relatively close range. But in terms of torpedoes, they're not that much of a threat. He can potentially dodge out of the way. But if they're a good Clemson player, they might try for an ambush. It's just they're more likely to try for that on a, a, a battleship. So once again, firing at the Oc October Revolution that we saw earlier, like in words. And uh, of course, if he gets fires on this, it's not going to be quite the same as getting a fire on a non-Soviet battleship because they can, of course, just pop their DCP much quicker than most other battleships. And there we go, taking a bit more damage. And again with the angling, taking some unnecessary chances there maybe, but now he's uh, properly angled away from this final shot, so that completely misses. He definitely got lucky in places. But, you know, some of the best games we all have involve at least a bit of RNG. This is World of Warships after all. And so now with that uh, October Revolution out of sight behind the island, well not out of sight, but you know, out of gun range, the Clemson is the target of the day. Unfortunately, despite the uh, Clemson basically making that drop over open water, the Wyoming ate a bunch of them anyway, and then got polished off by the Hosho. So, oh dear. The only silver lining is that Clemson is going to lose their ship in the process, but in terms of which ship is worth more points, well, we know what the answer there is. So the Clemson's down. Uh, at least they can't sneak around and do anything anymore, which is fine. But the remaining ship, the Britannia, is not looking particularly healthy, and the October Revolution still has half their hit points left. And you just know the Hosho's coming back with more torpedo bombers. Having just come off doing a video on the uh, uh, Indomitable, by the way, you know, <laughs> literally the Hermes and the Hosho and the uh, the the Langley uh, better torpedo attack ships <laughs> than that is. Well, having said that, I played a game earlier on today, which I think I will make a replay out of, even though it will be a replay. It wasn't live recorded, so it'll have all the bugs that come with uh, carrier replays. But it, it was a much better game damage-wise. It's just a lot of that damage was from fires, because I got lucky with my RNG. I've had plenty of games where I got unlucky with RNG and was uh, absolutely beating my head against the table in frustration. So the Britannia goes down, the October Revolution almost goes down, but not quite, and they're able to get a heal going. They take another top from the Hermes, and we've got to give a shout out to the Hermes here, who's doing sterling work considering they're in a Hermes. But while this has been going on, that Hosho has decided to get in the cap, and that's quite a smart move from them. It's now all three caps held by the enemy team, and it means their planes are really close to Chubby. For making attacks but it also means that potentially if chubby gets to catch sight of them he can peel off huge amounts of their hit points i was i was struggling for there was too many ways to put that my brain just locked up anyway he can hopefully kill them but first he's got to kill this angry october revolution The Hermes is continuing to help out, but you can see they're fairly well running out of planes at this point. And the Hosho, well, I don't know if this is a seal clubbing Hosho or whatever, but, you know, they've been conserving their planes quite well. And they're on three kills. This is no newbie Hosho, is what I'm saying. So there we go, we get both torps in the water, and it looks like Chubby's going to take both, but only has the one. It was forced him to a very awkward turn away there because he didn't want to be broadside to the October Revolution, but a turn inwards might have been better, except then he'd have been manoeuvring against the island and that might have made him more vulnerable to subsequent uh, plane drops. The AA on this, by the way, is not terrible, but it's not fantastic. If he's got BFT on this ship, you know, that's going to help with your AA DPS anyway, but 
it, it doesn't help that much. She's not fantastic. If all these 130mm guns were dual purpose, then, oh, that would be so good, but they're not. So the October Revolution has been able to pop another heel, and because they know they're facing a cruiser with piddly little destroyer caliber guns, albeit Soviet ones, they are just comfortably sitting more or less broadside, which you kind of have to to get all your turrets on target in the October Revolution. While all this is going on, of course, all three caps held by the enemy were over 900 points now, and there's less than three minutes to go. So, if Chubby's going to pull a miracle out of his hat, he'd better do it very soon. Very, very soon indeed. He's got a chance, though. But, talking of chances, again, taking maybe a few too many risks and again getting lucky with the dispersion from that October Revolution. He absolutely wants to try and maximise his firepower at this point, but considering if he goes down, that's it, game over. Yeah, he really did get lucky there. So this October Revolution is on fire, not from him, from the Hermes. And just at this, they hit over 990 points. The October Revolution burns out. And suddenly we can breathe a sigh of relief. Because the Hosho is unlikely to kill him at this point. It could happen, but it would be spectacularly unlucky if he detonated. We do have enough time to make this kill. He's got his confederate, there's the high caliber, and he gets this kill. It's going to be a Kraken as well. And we're also approaching 100,000 damage done. This is not bad for a Krasny crib. This is not bad at all. So the Hosho may be panicking a little because this went from an almost dead cert win. And we got up to what was it, 992 points? The enemy team was there was someone on the enemy team actually said GG. Because they assumed, you know, well, that's it, we've won. We're almost there on points. And if they just backed off, if that October Revolution had just backed off, maybe the Hermes could have killed them. But as it was, the combined firepower of the Hermes and Chubby meant that they went down. And after that, although the Ho Show was well-intentioned in getting that cap, it then put them in a very vulnerable position. And so we've ended that game with, there's the Kraken, over 2,000 base XP, and a carry in a Krasny Krim, which is not something you see every day. It really isn't. This ship has many interesting qualities, like I said, but we can't pretend it's great, not by any stretch of the imagination. Still, though, getting that amount of damage was pretty impressive, considering he didn't use his torps at any point. Because the good damage games I've had in this have typically involved, at least at some stage, typically towards the end when things are winding up, getting in somebody's face and torping them, if I can get away with it. Because, you know, it's fun to do. But in this case, no, it was all the guns. It was only about 12k fire damage, and the rest was all the guns. So, yes, a very good effort, Chubby. A very good showing in uh, an interesting ship. Let's just keep calling it interesting. You all know what I mean. So that's it for this replay in an uncommonly seen vessel. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. And if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.